breaking out? <laughs> about like Uber and some of these services and some of the issues that we're seeing. Um, well, it's interesting because a lot of these companies don't actually have quote unquote assets, right? So they're using other people's properties, other people's um, you know, uh, expertise, cars, homes, uh, whatever it might be. And they're just providing a medium to connect the end user to the other end user essentially, right? And so they're, um, they're working with contractors, basically. They're not employees. They don't really give a, they give a crap, right? Because it's, it's quantity over quality <laughs> at, that, at that point, right? Uh, both place, uh, both, you know, uh, these two types of companies, for example, the, the car sharing companies and the house sharing, property house sharing companies, right? They're just interested in, I just need a lot of people on both sides. A lot of people using the service to find places to stay, find cars to drive them around and I need a lot of people on the other hand I need to have a lot of places for people to come stay at and I need to find have a lot of people that drive other people around right that kind of thing and also mm. for things like you know like Grubhub and everything like that right like they need restaurants and then they need people who are hungry and want those things delivered to them so they I don't think that they really care um, and if I was a business right like it's hard to police all of that, right? I mean, it's like Twitch, <laughs> right? Or, or YouTube, right? It's hard to police every single little, uh, e like every single end user on both ends, right? And um, it sucks because I think they're providing a great service, right? Like having that kind of um, place where you can go and uh, like a medium to find the thing that you need and a medium to post that you have something that others need. That's cool. That's great. But you can't just have it willy nilly and everybody goes on it because then, right, then you've got horrible things that can happen because human nature as it is hasn't really evolved a lot uh, over the past few centuries and millennia. Uh, you know, the way that our technology and our communities, um, you know, have had to interact with that technology. So, you know, as a person who has used uh, uh, all of these types of things, ordering food <laughs> uh, through Grubhub, um, taking an Uber and a Lyft, um, and staying in an Airbnb, you know, it's at the end of the day, right, if you're the end user that is using these services, I feel like you sort of just have to a little bit use your common sense if, you've, if you're lucky enough to have it um, and see what feels good and right for you, right? And if you're the person who puts out their services, I mean, they're also, um, what's the word? Like, they're not any safer from all these bad things happening to them than the other than the other type of user, right? right. If someone's coming into your home, um, if someone's coming into your car, um, if you even if you deliver food to somebody, <laughs> right, or, or a restaurant does, or I don't you know, like, there's ways for other people to fuck up your shit, <laughs> no matter what side of the, of the of the table you're at, you know. Um, so I don't know. I, does that answer your question? <laughs> sort of, kind of where I was going with. Well, you know, the, the whole thing is is you know we hear horrible things that happen. Whether it's, for instance, an Uber driver attacking one of the people in the back of the car, or the sexual harassment charges, and then we see things like uh, the image down below us, where uh, it's an actual tweet that happened. Uh, basically, what it says is in oh let's oh that's a thing now news. A colleague of mine thought it odd that there was a single motion detector in his Airbnb and the bed room and voila it's an ip camera connected to the web he left at 3 a.m reported host is suspended colleague got his refund so now what we're also seeing too is uh the potential of invasion of privacy so with this now people could potentially put cameras into their Air airbnbs there's already ones being put into their cars right because drivers are using it for safety but then you know does this cross the line of uh privacy well, in the sense of Airbnb, absolutely. It is absolutely illegal for anyone to do this, even hotels. But then again, it's like, well, what is the intent? Are they really trying to be bad guys in trying to get a peek at something? Or are they really just concerned about the property? And is it being damaged? Or will something? Or are people doing stuff in their domicile, in this location, that they shouldn't be? And for those of you that uh, may not be familiar with Airbnb, it is an online site um
that's spelled a airbnb.com and um you if you've got a place where people could come and stay uh basically um whether it's a room that you're renting out um or an entire house an apartment uh, multiple locations that sort of thing um some people rent out their like rv somebody was ten uh, renting out like a tent on their property i mean all sorts of things if you've got like a place a shelter of some sort that you can offer to somebody um that is in somewhat decent condition although that apparently is not a requirement crazy stuff is on there um you can place this particular uh shelter domicile thing um on the site and offer it up for people to rent like as if it was a hotel as if you were going to you know hotels.com or something like that or you know marriott.com or something like that and um, you as the other end user can go on airbnb search for the different locales that you're um, looking to stay in and you, you get um, to see when they're available you get to see a price again just like if you are renting a hotel room or uh, looking for for a place to stay somewhere and what's um, you know kind of the benefits that some people are saying for Airbnb is of course that you aren't staying at a hotel right so you get sort of a more um, authentic experience of where you're at uh, potentially you get to talk with the host um, there's different types of hosts uh, that I found of course you know some people are really hands-on they'll come they'll greet you they'll give you the key etc some are a little bit more hands-off um, they'll leave the key uh, in maybe a lockbox of some sort or you know if it's a tent I don't know they leave the zipper open I, you know <laughs> who knows um, and um, and you can also just um, you know get uh, again, that kind of authentic feeling because you are able to be in the neighborhood. So like, it's really great, uh, for example, if you are trying to move to a new city and you're trying to see, hey, am I actually gonna like living there? And when you're staying at a hotel, you know, you're staying at a hotel and that's kind of nice. Um, but if you're staying in a neighborhood that you might potentially be living in, it's nice to be able to walk around the, the streets and like see what the neighbors are like and like really get a sense of what it's like to live there. Um, and if you're just traveling and exploring, that's also really nice too because you'll actually get to meet people, you know, because uh, the concierge of the hotels should be pretty friendly. Uh, but they're, they'll be different than just meeting actual people who live there, right? Who might know some things. So, um, it's great. <laughs> uh, and again, if anyone's not familiar with something like Uber or Lyft, um, you as you, if you have a car and you're a you know, driver, <laughs> not just have a car, um, you're able to offer your driving services to somebody who might uh, not have a car or not be able to um, drive for whatever reason. So it's sort of like a taxi service. Right. Um, but again, you're having a little bit more of a quote unquote <laughs> should be different kind of experience nicer experience right because you're interacting with a real not that Jackson Travers aren't but uh, you know you, you have a, another real kind of person it's not someone who is um necessarily employed by another company um to drive you around uh Uber and Lyft you know everyone's a contractor so they set their own hours they kind of can to some extent do whatever they want um, and keep their car in whatever shape they want <laughs> and offer uh, certain things like some drivers you know offer you water or snacks or um, you know they'll uh, depending on the kind of car that they have uh, I've been in cars where I've had like heated seats and they were like what tv show do you want to watch in the back and I'm like okay I'm Tam. Um. Yeah, so it, it, it really is just like a, a taxi service, if you if you will. But it is they are all independent contractors and it is really based on the individual and how they get rated. So if you get rated very, very, very poorly, eventually over time, they're just not going to let you do it because they want as an Uber or Lyft, these ride share companies want, you know, happy end users, happy end customers. And so if you're not doing your job, not being personable, not getting people on time where they need to be safely, you can get rated down for it. Now, um, with these systems, again, it really is just replacing something, right? These are services where, for instance, with Uber and Lyft, they are literally a taxi service that owns no cars. Why? Because they're independent contractors that they pull in, like you and I own them. Airbnb is a hotel service that owns no hotels. Why? Because they use our spaces and we agree in the terms of service or the TOS that yes, we can use this. And yes, it is on me. The liability is on me as a user because this is my property to make sure everyone is safe and make sure that people get the experience that they're looking for. 
And uh, Dynamike uh, asks, actually, do these places have to follow normal rent laws? And uh, are these places legally rentable and fall under those laws? So first off, and, and again, it gets pretty in-depth because many cities and many states are actually trying to figure this out, right? Because it is a much newer thing, even though it's been around for a bit now, it's still very new. And many people didn't realize how well these systems would take off. So uh, there are many apartment complexes now and many other rentable properties that are putting into their agreements that you are not allowed to sublease or subcontract out a part of your home or, or where you're staying out to another person. Now, some of this is because they don't want their toes being stepped on. They don't want to be losing money. They technically don't want you making money off of their property that you are renting. The other part of it is for security reasons, right? Because they do a background check on you in order for you to get your location. They have no idea who you're bringing in uh, from Airbnb or any other kind of travel uh, house or home share website. Now, there is a little bit of background check and stuff that they do through these systems. But again, it isn't as in-depth or detailed, as far as I'm aware of, as if you were just to rent a property, an apartment, a home, a condo, a townhouse, you name it. Or or even, you know, when you just get a, uh, a hotel room, right? Like no one's, no one's running a background check on you then. <laughs> right, exactly. And so many of the landlords are concerned about this. What type of people are coming in? How do these people interact with the other people on the property? Uh, are they going to destroy the property? There's just too many ifs, ands, or buts about this and, and too many legal concerns. So many of them will put it in the agreement. Many of them will also, if they find out, will say, okay, well, we're changing the agreement. You have to sign this one or you basically can't rent the, the property. Now, there was a, uh, a situation actually about, I want to say six months ago now, where a family was uh, has a an apartment in a brownstone in New York and um, I guess the state had stopped by or the city had stopped by to take a look at something in the building and found out that this one specific apartment had uh, people from an Airbnb and that the actual renters weren't there. So from this, they ended up getting uh, charged, I don't know what, an insane amount of money and they had to go to court because uh, it's against New York, uh, the laws within New York City to be renting out subsections of your uh, location, I guess, of your home, of your apartment or whatever, uh, at least based on what they were doing, because they were worried about safety concerns is what they said, uh, whether it be fire regulations or what have you. And so they said, well, this is against, you know, safety conduct. So they charged the family and the family's like, look, you know, we didn't know about this. This isn't like clear to anyone. And it's not like you guys are announcing it anywhere. It's not in our rental agreement. Uh, and they looked through it and it wasn't listed there, but they still had to go to court. They still had to be uh, charged their fines. Um, or, or pay their fines. So it was, it's really insane because people are, are trying to figure this all out, right? So, you know, in some states it is illegal or in some cities or parts of cities it is illegal. Other ones, they're trying to make it so or trying to question what do they do? And, you know, this also has opened up um, a different kind of industry where um, there's actually people who buy properties multiple properties and then they actually rent them out on airbnb to um, help make up that money so instead of having tenants uh, where they could rent the you know let's say a house for a month for let's say three thousand dollars right um they will actually put it on airbnb and because they're able to also parcel it in uh, you know, uh, day increments and week increments, they can get a lot more money for that yeah. particular property. So now something that would rent to a regular tenant, quote unquote, um, monthly for $3,000 could now rent for five, $6,000, if not more, depending on, you know, sort of how they parcel it. Because there's also like, uh, you can tack on like cleaning fees and blah, blah, blah fees and pet fees and whatever you might want as, yeah. as a host. Um, so we've actually come across um, a lot of people too who have multiple properties. Um, I know that when we were looking at an Airbnb, you know, we contacted one person for one property for uh, a set of days. And uh, the, the guy was a little confused too, because he's like, wait, which one are you talking about? <laughs> like, is it this one over here or this other one over here? And that's when we kind of realized, wow, okay, there's it's multiple, uh, multiple places that, that you can um, rent out. So that's also a business in, in of itself. So there's a lot of things too that we can that we can talk about at length on Airbnb. The one thing that we also wanted to focus on today was actually this um, sort of, uh, invasion to privacy, right? Because what they found now is that um, some 
Airbnbs. And again, this is probably a, a very small percentage of actual B- Airbnbs out there, mm-hmm. um, especially people who maybe uh, want this to be their full time income. Um, they have some cameras installed and who knows what they're doing with the footage that they're capturing. But basically, you don't um, have, you know, the privacy that you're expecting to have when you are staying um, at places where they're a little bit more, quote, reputable, right? Like hotels. Um, Although who knows what hotels are doing. But nowadays, right, cameras, they are so tiny, right? If you try to put a camera in the 1950s in an Airbnb, (laughs) You probably wouldn't have such an easy time, right? But now our cameras are so small that you can literally hide them in anything, including screws. Um, And so, uh, you know, one of the things that you have to look out for as an end, uh, as the user of Airbnb, as a um, as a traveler, is just know that, you know, there might be (laughs) some hidden things in your Airbnb. So if you do um, get to that site take a look around, right? Spend 15 minutes and just kind of look at the place that you're staying in. Um, As the the picture that we showed you um, talked about, uh, these people had in the bedroom a motion sensor installed, right? And they were just like, that's kind of (laughs) weird. We put motion sensors at like entryways, right? Like doorways or something like that. Like, why are you having one in the bedroom? That makes no sense. And when they looked in the back of it, they, it it was just a camera in there. Um, And of course now, like I was saying before, you know, there's so many places you can put cameras. A lot of people have like nanny cams and like all this other stuff too. So anything could be a camera. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, and that's kind of scary, right? I mean, you know, like I don't think I do anything crazy when I go uh, in a hotel room <laughs> or an Airbnb. Um, but uh, you know, if you are expecting some sort of privacy, uh, obviously that can make you feel not so great, right? Um, Plus, it's not only the fact that, um, you know, some of these cameras um, are cameras and that's by itself, holy shit, who is watching me, right? Um, But also some of these are wireless. And so they're transmitting the data somewhere else and probably recording it, right? I mean, they could record it locally too, but that's even crazier because now it might not even be who knows it might like who knows right it might not even be the the host necessarily if they too just bought the the house let's say renovated from someone and they were like great i'm gonna rent this out for airbnb but the i don't know maybe there's something in the fan that (laughs) is actually a camera so it's very interesting because um this you know kind of this this invasion of privacy i feel like is happening to us everywhere right i mean between the alexas and the (laughs) nests and the like there's so many like gadgetries that are connected to the internet that are um able to record our voices um webcams you know like they record our our likeness um and they're all connected to the internet like that's insane and now even when i travel i can't you know and i'm i'm somewhere else um, and I, I don't see or think that there's anything else around me that could be recording me in some form or fashion. Um, it, you, you know, it might still be happening. So that's kind of sucky. And in the chat, we have uh, Pixelly says that's really uncomfortable when renting a place and have no privacy. Uh, Dynamite says, so no sex in the Airbnb. Got it. Absolutely. Note to self. Uh, bring a bug camera detector. Yep. Uh, you can be a camera yourself if you flash people. Well, there you go. So, you know, it's very interesting because we're always hearing about, let's say, violence breaking out between people and situations. And how does that work within the system where they're not getting checks and balances, per se, right? Because someone from the company isn't in the car or isn't in the Airbnb to review everything, to look at everything and to be an intermediary. And now you have situations where now people are using technology as another way. Uh, to kind of peek in or get in into the lives of other people. And this is very serious too, just as serious, if not more in a way, because this information, this, you know, the video footage or the photos that these cameras pick up can be put online, can be sold, can be put out there. And now your privacy is completely gone. I mean, we're hearing about 
you know, the invasion of privacy when it comes to our information through hacking, right? People getting our credit card numbers, our social security numbers and selling it out there. But now all of a sudden it's like, well, we got to worry about some Yahoo in uh, Seattle, Washington, who has a house filled with potential cameras. Now, this isn't to freak you all out, right? Because, I mean, <laughs> most of the time people don't think about this. Not usually normal people have this sense of, I could put a camera in here and record everyone. This is fantastic. And, you know, sometimes people have cameras, but they're for outside the home, right? For security, both for them, the property, but also for you to make sure that no one's coming onto the property that shouldn't be. And that's a good thing. And, the, and that's plenty fine. But, you know, as we're looking through, uh, there's actually an article on Mashable right now that talks about this more in detail. And they mentioned that, as Tatiana mentioned, you can put a camera and mask it with the head of a screw. So it looks like there's a screw put into the wall or uh, in, into a device such as a smoke alarm. So it makes it look like it's just a normal screw to keep something up when really it's actually a uh, recording device. They also have them uh, in alarm clocks, um, really anything that, you know, looks like it could house something. <laughs> They can make it happen. And and some of the things that they suggest too is, you know, just throw a towel over something that looks shady or suspicious or unplug it or, you know, move it elsewhere, put it in a drawer, that kind of thing. But yeah, and you can also just take 15 minutes when you go into an Airbnb or even a hotel, especially if it's a smaller hotel and you don't feel comfortable, you're just curious, just look around. Uh, from this article, most people said that because uh, these people aren't international spies, they're not your 007s, <laughs> that the devices they do pick up are fairly cheap. You know, they buy online for, you know, 100 bucks or something like that, and they can be fairly detectable. You know, they, they have a sort of camouflage or mask to them of some sort, but if you look at them closely enough, you can easily tell this is not what it's supposed to be. So there is that. Uh, the other trick that you can do is there is actually an app. Uh, Pixelly actually hit the nail on the head, uh, not the screw with the camera inside of it, but the nail on the head <laughs> when she mentioned, well, what about an app or a detector to check up to see if there are any devices? Well, luckily, most places where you stay or most places that you're in will have some sort of Wi-Fi or data that you might be able to access. With this data, you can actually connect to something called Fing App. That's F-I-N-G app. And uh, you can find them on Twitter at Fing App and uh, also online at Fing. And basically what this does is it scouts the network. So it pings the network and sees if it can find any sort of devices that don't belong like IP cameras. And they will let you know. And what the Mashable article says is that, well, what if they just have cameras outside? At that point, it's easy to find out through this app, whether it's something that is a camera outside or it's something a little bit more sinister within. And I will say, you know, we, at least in our experience, we've had um, only positive experience with Airbnb. And again, you know, Airbnb, just like a lot of these other sites have reviews, you know, you're able to actually see um, if people have stayed there before, what they've said about it, you're able to see um, hopefully lots of pictures of the place if the host is really good and takes a lot of photos um, and they should look accurate, hopefully. But again, if you get on site and something is off, like your inner gut will tell you, listen to it, you know, because um, no amount of saving money will <laughs> is worth your life. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons to another reason I should say that Airbnb is so popular now is because it can actually be more affordable to stay at one for a longer period of time mm -hmm. than if you were at a hotel, right? A hotel could run you somewhere between $80 a night to $500 a night, again, depending on where you're staying and who's paying for it. Um, whereas an Airbnb per night could be um, about 20 to 30% lower. Um, and again, for people who are staying for long periods of time, um, it's if you're going to stay there for a long period of time, it's definitely worth, you know, checking it out for just a few minutes while you get there, ask the questions of the host, see what the host is like, if, if hopefully, you know, they're there to meet you, um, you know, uh, and don't let the neighborhood fool you because uh, shady people exist in all sorts of neighborhoods, <laughs> um, you know, so you can be in an amazingly nice, safe area. Um, but the house that you're staying in may not be run by a nice, safe person. <laughs> so, you know, and again, we're not trying to scare you or, you know, or anything like that, put you in any type of fear or stress. 
But it's just good to know because as I mentioned before, you know, we are going into this global economy, this global tribe. Well, this global tribe is advancing into a huge technological era where data can be so easily accessed, so easily captured and then easily shared out. And so with this, even though it's great to have, you know, cool little small spy cameras for fun and you may think of it as innocent, someone else might not and could be using it for something a little bit nefarious. And again, with any tool, anyone can use it for the wrong reasons, right? And so it's not up to us to doubt everyone and to be negative against everyone, but that's where uh, an app like Fing comes into play, or for instance, just doing a 15 minute check, go through the space, you feel comfortable, good, enjoy the rest of your trip. And I will say Airbnb um, is, is global now. Um, yeah. I think it's actually, I'm not going to say where I think it started because I'm not actually sure, <laughs> but um, I have a feeling that maybe it started uh, somewhere in America, um, but it is global now. Um, and uh, I have also heard stories of some people where that is their primary income in other parts of the world um, to rent out these, uh, these spaces. Um, and, you know, sometimes, uh, selling that data of, um, you know, may, they might not be recording you for, you know, just to see you naked. Uh, they might be recording you to get a sense of what um, you do in private because companies like to have that kind of information, you know, um, and they'll you and they'll sell that to, um, again, not necessarily for really awfully nefarious reasons, but nefarious nonetheless, because they're selling your information to corporations, you know? So it might not be because they're they're trying to catch you, uh, catch you like, you know, having sex and putting you up on a porn site, but they might be selling, um, you know, uh, what kind of food uh, you order in or, um, you know, what kind of, what kind of things that you do um, in, in a way that you may not even expect. Um, corporations nowadays, especially big corporations, pay a lot of money for that type of data because then they can tailor their, their product um, for you. So. And, and I want to clarify too, it's not they are doing it. I want to clarify that there is no proof on our end. We're saying that that is a <laughs> potential. So it, it could be something that could happen. Again, data seems to be king and seems to be uh, something that has a huge price on it and people are willing to pay for it. So in any sense of, of, uh, of it, it can be put out there and it can be shared. So it's just good to be aware of uh, not only the negatives, but also the positives that are out there, such as apps, such as just checking, just to make sure that you're secure, looking at reviews too, and also not being afraid to go to someone like Airbnb and say, hey, look, this is the situation, this is what's going on. And especially if you document it, like we uh, went with, with this uh, motion sensor that was actually a camera, they took photos of it and posted it on social media and it went viral. So even just doing that will quickly shut these people down and put them in jail even.